Welcome. I want to address a few results in combinatorics. They deal with uh, simplicial complexes and graphs. And uh, kind of culmination is a is a is a nice new result in uh, about the Shannon capacity of certain classes of of of, of graphs. Let's look at the setup. So we start with a finite abstract simplicial complex, which is just a finite set of sets closed under the operation of taking finite non-empty subsets. For example, here, let's take uh, this G, <clears throat> finite set of sets. We usually draw them. Geometric realization is uh, here. This is a cyclic. In this case, this is just C4. <clears throat> and we realized as a, as a graph. <clears throat> so these are the vertices here. These are the edges. But it can be higher dimension. And uh, so it's arbitrary set of sets closed under the operation of taking finite non-empty subsets. And this forms a nice category of objects. We have a, a we can assign to this G. We can assign two uh, graphs. So one of them is phi of G, <coughs> which is the barycentric graph. So what we take is so this is V over vertices and edges. The vertices are just the sets, and the edges as edges we take <coughs> all pairs such that A is subset of B or B is subset of A. <coughs> so this is the barycentric graph. <coughs> so the click complex or Whitney complex that's important of this graph is again a complex, implicit complex, and then the, the map which maps G to G1. <coughs> G1 is the Whitney complex of uh, of phi of g. This is the barycentric refinement. <clears throat> Very exciting uh, object. Uh, one of the kind of important things in combinatorial topology, you can repeat that iteration and you get all kind of nice results. You get kind of closer to the continuum like this. So in this case, what happens is each of these uh, edges has become a has become a new <coughs> uh, vertex, and then what we have is we have just a graph with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With, with eight, we have an octagon here. So we have still the the vertices, <coughs> and then the edges have also become vertices now because they are contained in each other. So this is the barycentric graph, and you see, kind of has just doubled the number of Thing. But but uh, say if this is G uh, is a triangle, then the barycentric refinement has now <coughs> seven seven parts. Something fell. Has uh, seven has seven parts. One two three four five six seven. So and then the incidence relations are given this uh, barycentric refinement here, which is again uh, which is a which is a graph, but the sim the, the the, the, the Whitney complex, or the click complex of that is again a simplicity complex. So this is G1, and you can repeat that. <clears throat> so that's very nice. Uh, uh, it's kind of incidence relations. <clears throat> there is another graph which we are going to discuss, which is Psi of G, which is even more exciting. <clears throat> so it's also a finite simple graph, which also has G as the, the sets as vertices. But now we take as as edge as edges we take all pair A and B such that A intersected with B is not empty. <coughs> this is the connection graph. <coughs> so the connection graph is has the same number of vertices, but now what happens is so the connection graph, this is phi of G. Psi of G in this case uh, is again like this, it has, it, it's again an octagon. But 
But now the edges, because the edges, uh, if you look at the edges here, the edges are all connected with each other, right? So this intersects with that. So there's an intersection here. So they, <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's another one here. <coughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it works, and so they are all connected. <coughs> so this graph is now a two-dimensional graph, so the dimension, the maximal dimension of uh, psi of g is larger here than the maximal dimension of uh, phi of g, or which is the dimension, the maximal dimension of, uh, of g. So, so this was one dimensional, this was one dimension, but this is, this is two dimensional. So these connection graphs are in general much, much fatter. So if this is g here, then uh, the connection graph is now, can, let me just draw it in, a, in blue, the connection graph. So what happens is we have all these simplices are vertices, and uh, these are all connected with each other. So what we have here is actually a complete, a complete graph. Here. So this is much fatter, <coughs> a much fatter graph than 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 the original, the original uh, uh, graph or also barycentric graph. But uh, one of the results is first of all we can get back from this graph. We can back to Simplicity complex. I mean, just as an abstract graph, we give the abstract graph, we don't give any relations what sets re represent which vertex, but we can get back the set. And then we can also get the, uh, uh, we can also uh, relate the homotopy of these two things. So these are, this is one of the uh, 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 two themes. And there's a third theme, which is that these graphs are actually very nice in, in, in many respects. So they have nice, uh, 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 nice uh, uh, Laplacians, which are always invertible, and uh, also the Shannon capacity will actually comp compute. It's just a hard thing to compute. It doesn't even know it for the for the seven gone, but we can we can compute it for all these graphs. <clears throat> so that's the topic, and uh, I'm going to look at uh, theorem one first. <clears throat> Okay, let me prove this. You will see, once you see the, why the result is true, it's obvious, but it's still kind of I invite you to look at that without actually listening to the proof first and see. It took me several hours myself to actually find the, the reconstruction. So it is, a, it is an interesting topic and it's uh, related to a theorem of, uh, <coughs> I hope I spell it right, <coughs> Uh, it's usually abbreviated the SM theorem, <coughs> spielrein marzewski theorem. By the way, these are the same people. So there was a Polish mathematician who had to change name due to prosecution uh, during the Second World War. And uh, so it's a very beautiful theorem. And the theorem says, uh, theorem <coughs> tells that if G is a arbitrary finite simple graph, <coughs> use G here. So then, then A, there is a set of set, non-empty sets <coughs> such that uh, its connection graph is a very beautiful result and editors and collaborators have later kind of found optimal you know how many sets do we need and I think it's somehow like n square I think n square fourth or n square half are needed to to actually reconstruct uh, to, to build the to, to build that graph so you have a you have an arbitrary graph right? something like that and then what you do is you actually build sets it looks it looks simple, but kind of all the incidences have, have have to work. In this case, it's easy, but if they are uh, complicated graphs, it's actually a, a, a bit challenging to do. But still, it's a beautiful theorem, but we are not using this. It's just a little bit of background to that uh, to that thing. So what what we have is we have we have special type of graph. So we start with a with a simply sealed complex, and then we build this graph. Let me just do only for psi. So psi of g is the connection graph. <coughs> now, 
Now, uh, you can make this uh, reconstruction problem harder by saying, okay, I want to do, be able to do that in polynomial time and not just find, you know, NP complete, solve NP complete problems like finding all complete subgraphs in the graph. So this is, uh, uh, but, but, but the, the proof will show we can actually do it even fast. <coughs> So finding clicks would be a very costly thing that's NP complete. We have a we have here uh, we can do it in polynomial time. So again, if you kind of will see the proof, it's almost uh, kind of too obvious, and you will dismiss it as as trivial. But, uh, but 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 to get the idea, of how do you actually do that? How do you actually get the sets? Let's just look at the example kind of which we have seen in this case. We have this uh, connection graph of the. Uh, cyclic graph or cyclic uh, complex. So what we have to find is we have to associate to each point we have to associate the set and uh, you might actually be tempted to look at the, the places where you have maximal connectivity somehow kind of re relate them to uh, higher dimensional parts. That's 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 possible, but it's harder. It's easier to uh, to do it because because we have to find clicks, right? Or, uh, Actually, kind of. No, I think you can you can do it. It's kind of a dual uh, a dual story. You can also do it with finding maxima. But the, the point is, which I want to do is, I, I I look at the points which are minimal, so they have minimal degree. So take the points, the set of uh, look at the degree function. <clears throat> And now uh, we make the following uh, uh, observation that for, for vertices, for zero dimensional parts, D is a strict minimum. Vertices are for me just zero dimensional points. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's the, the vertex degree function you can compute relatively fast, right? You have just to look how, how many points are connected to a, to a, to a given point. And then uh, in this case, the, the degree is two, in this case, the degree is four. So this is a strict minimum because it's smaller than the, 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 than the values of each neighbor. So it's a strict, uh, a, a strict minimum. And uh, this you can, you can see, uh, you can see that, <sighs> You can see that uh, uh, pretty pretty uh, quickly. So if this is x, and uh, uh, if you have a if you have a point y which is connected to it, this means that the only possibility is that x is contained in y, uh, because it's zero dimensional. But then anything which is connected to x is also connected to y. So the 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 y contains more points as neighbors than x. So the unit sphere of this contains the unit sphere of that. And that's it strictly contains it, so that's why it's larger. So that's the that's the first part, kind of the first observation. So we can identify the vertices, and now what we can do is we can just identify the sets. So we, for example, we can say the sets. Uh, so this is G, this is vertices. This is G zero. So we can get G one is uh, the intersections of all S X cross uh, intersected with S Y where x and y are in uh, g0, and uh, a, a, a g1 is so, and, and additionally we don't want, uh, uh, so these are all points z, but uh, we don't want z is equal to sx cross sy. Just take a w here, is not possible. Or different. So that's how we get G1. So G1 are all the intersections of spheres, unit spheres. These are unit spheres, all the vertices which are connected to X, the graph generated by that, and we take the intersection of all of all this would actually give triangles if you cannot do it with four points. So like that we can construct G2, G until G you know, 
k, k is the maximal dimension. <coughs> okay, let's look at graph homotopy. <coughs> Turns out that it is completely equivalent to the homotopy we know in, in, in for, for topological spaces if they are nice CW complexes. So, so but this graph homotopy took some time to develop. So it was uh, based on uh, Whitehead, George W. Whitehead, who lived uh, very close by in, in uh, Winchester here and uh, was working at MIT. <coughs> I lived in the same town and Shannon and Shannon we will later see also a giant in uh, in topology and uh, so he kind of did that but this is all classical topological spaces CW complexes and then in the 90s uh, with a with a, a discrete Morse theorem Foreman or digital topology Ivako, uh, Ivachenko same, Ivako and Ivachenko is the same person so we have a we have a, 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 a seen their a graph theoretical uh, homotopy operations and then uh, <coughs> Chen Yao the famous Yao and uh, Yi, they have kind of simplified that uh, substantially. I think this is a really uh, important thing because these operations here, were working with edges and and vertices, this only kind of works with the with the with the, edge, with, the with the vertices. So this makes proofs much more uh, uh, easy, and it makes it actually accessible. So this is actually a game which is a. Uh, which is which is quite nice. So what you are doing when you are doing a homotopy x? This is a graph. Let's just take a finite simple graph. <coughs> and uh, what you can do to, to to make a homotopy extension, you you define what contractible means. So contractible is that the one point graph is contractible. This is equal to one. <coughs> A1. This is the one element contract. This is contractible, and then we say inductively. G is contractible if there exists an X in the vertex sets just that G minus X and SX are contractible. So this is an inductive definition, it's at less points, so this makes sense. And in this case, we kind of can make an ex ex expansion. For example, this is this is contractible. This is the the, the 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 K2 graph is contractible because we can take that away to get K to get one. So this is contractible. So we can actually extend that. So we can add an, add another x. Or these uh, points here, these three points is uh, the K3 is contractible because if you can take one away can take one away, we get k2, we can take one away, we can take k1, we get contractibility. Contractibility you can check very quickly and uh, also polynomially far. Oh, no. No, kind of. You have to just to check through all n points and then through all n minus one point. So it's still kind of a thing, but it's, it's, it, it, it's doable, you know, you can, you get to an end. So this is, a, this is what, what, what happens. So in this case, we can add this. This is a, this is a homotopy extension, etc. etc. So we can extend this graph Right, like that. So this is all. These are all homotopic. So this is this, this this graphs are homotopic. Or actually, we could even take this now and connect it with all together. Uh, so that uh, so, so 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 we have a new point here, which is a which is even higher dimensional point. So it, homotopy doesn't preserve dimension, maximal dimension, but it's it it actually is a it, it, it's a very very nice pro. So this is a this is homotopic kind of uh, extensions but then we can do the opposite we can uh, we can take things away we can take a vertex x away if the sx is contractible so we take it away so that's kind of uh, that makes it smaller right we can ex we can we can kind of shrink it down together so like that so these are homotopy these are homotopy steps <laughs> So we either extend or we uh, re reduce. So now uh, we have an equivalence relation, which is uh, which is that A, A uh, is, is homotopic to B if there exists a finitely many 
como top step. Get from A to B. Now, in general, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, only do it with you know with with uh, so even uh, contractible. Thus, it's not the same thing than homotopic to one. So this homotopic thing is much much harder. It's actually it's actually undecidable. You cannot you cannot find a, a Turing machine which decide, decides you from every, any graph, even two dimensional graphs, whether they are they are homotopic to one or not. So homotopic to one is a completely different thing than contractible. And uh, there are graphs like the Dun the Dunsat <coughs> Beanhaus. Uh, 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 where which, which, which illustrate this for for discrete manifolds even, <clears throat> but you can even see that in a in easier in, in, in smaller uh, uh, cases already. Kind of so these are homotopy steps here. So let's for example say this graph here. This is C four, and this graph here. This is C five. <clears throat> right? How do you can can you get from here to here? So it's obvious, kind of, if you look at the kind of geometric characterizations, these are such circles. Of course, they are homotopic, but how do you do that? You cannot do it this by removing a vertex, right? If you remove a vertex here, then the unit sphere is is the, is the, is a is a is a zero dimensional sphere is disconnected. So this is a, this is not a, this is not not allowed. But here's the solution of the puzzle to deform the square to a pentagon. So C four. We want to do C5. So what we do is the following thing. So we take a first ex expansion, which is here, kind of just an additional point, which connects to a contractible part. And then we add a, another point here. <coughs> right? This is possible because also this unit sphere is contractible. It's just a line, linear graph. And then we remove that part, we remove this one, and then what we get is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, let's look at the theorem two. First, some examples. So we have seen, we have seen this. Uh, this is actually this is this is a. Uh, this is this is phi of C four, and uh, so this was uh, <coughs> so this is phi of C four. This is psi of C four. <coughs> so they are homotopic. So why are they homotopic? It's actually the same similar problem with, which we have just fought, right? We have to remove this. Uh, these edges. But let me just uh, think, we have assumed that G is barycentric refined because we can take this example which is C3 which uh, uh, which is not the uh, a barycent which is not the Whitney complex of a graph right it's not the triangle the the, 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 the it's not the two dimensional object it's the boundary of the triangle so this is the boundary of the triangle <clears throat> so it's only the boundary complex it's the skeleton complex of the of the of the k3 it doesn't contain the the you know the, the fat the two dimensional part <laughs> So if you take that and then the, what happens with uh, with phi of g, phi of g has one, two, o. We have also the, the vertices, but generated by this, but it also contains the, <coughs> contains the vertices. <coughs> so this has six. So phi of c, c is, it has six uh, vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is c six. As a graph, but let's look at psi of g. <clears throat> so what we have is uh, uh, we have uh, also six sets. They are kind of this is always a subgraph. Phi of c is always a subgraph. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. But now what happens is the edges. These edges are all uh, 
pairwise connected. So this, so these are, let's look, assume this is, these are, these edges are, are, are connected. So this is actually kind of as a graph, this is the same thing than when you, when you take that. So this is a, this is this, this is this graph here. And this is, this is a two dimensional. This is not homotopic. So this is actually a disc. This is a two dimensional ball. This is not homotopic to that. We cannot get from this to this. Right? So because this is actually homotopic to one, this is not homotopic to one. Now, how do we show that this is not homotopic to one? There's an there's a, a Euler characteristic. Which is the Euler characteristic, which is in this case kind of just the number of vertices minus the number of edges, right? The number of edges are counted negatively. So this is uh, the Euler characteristic of this is equal to six minus uh, three minus three, no, six minus six, which is zero. That's all, all circles have Euler characteristics. While this one has, uh, 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 there are one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, a zero dimensional part, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one dimensional parts, and then one, two, three, four, uh, uh, two-dimensional parts. That's the Euler formula. By the way, Euler never thought about graphs as one-dimensional objects, like later in the second 20th century. So that kind of came later and uh, somehow has castrated graphs to something which is uh, uh, much less powerful. Graphs are as powerful as, 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 as you can do anything with them. You can cover anything about simplicity complex, finite simplicity complex if you have nice topological spaces, you can model them with graphs, <clears throat> like finite CW complexes. So we have that six, nine, four is equal to one. So that's different. So this uh, other characteristic of a, of a ball is always one. Other characteristic of a circle is always zero, that's a sphere. And uh, <clears throat> so this is, uh, this cannot be homotopic. And you can easily check that the, that the, 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 the other characteristic of uh, a homotopy extension is just uh, and then we have the Euler characteristic of uh, Sx minus one. So that's that's equal to zero <coughs> because the unit sphere is always contractible. Contractible graphs of Euler characteristic one. <coughs> kind of have made a, a video about the Euler gem formula, which is. Uh, which says that the <coughs> d-dimensional sphere is <coughs> so. For example, the Euler characteristic of a two-dimensional sphere is two. That's the Euler formula. Euler characteristic of a three-dimensional sphere is zero, and uh, so uh, <coughs> you get that. For example, you take a you take a you take a two-dimensional sphere. And you make a suspension of a two-dimensional sphere. So suspension means you, you just add two points and you connect everything to these two points. And then you get a three-dimensional sphere, which is uh, which is exciting in, in, in topology. Right? <clears throat> so we have a uh, we have this. Uh, we want to prove this theorem. <clears throat> So, I mean, we, we, we see that we need the barycentric refinement assumption. So that doesn't work. This is not the barycentric refinement. This is not the barycentric refinement of any other complex. And that's why, uh, why it can fail. So in this case, it fails. It also fails by, by for, for example, for this, in this case here, when you take S2 and you take this uh, octahedron graph, you take this octahedron graph and you make you take the connection graph. The connection graph is actually homotopic to a three-dimensional sphere, which is quite interesting. So uh, it's very, quite complicated already, but you see kind of there's high connectivity around every uh, every of the of the of the vertices. So that's actually what we have just seen, and this kind of reverses this uh, Chen Yao Yi. Uh, a construction. So what actually happens, so we have this, uh, so this is the edge, this is A, this is B, and then what we have is we want to remove that. Let me just see when, under which conditions can we remove that. And uh, the condition which we have is that uh, that uh, S of A, which is in this case 
This is S of A here. And S of A minus B is this. So they are both contractible. So we, because they are both contractible, we can remove that. And, 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 and the proof is obvious because we just need two steps. So if we make a, an extension, uh, so what we can do is how we can, can, can we remove that? We can remove that by just adding another. We have seen that we add another, uh, first we add kind of a scaffolding uh, uh, vertex. And then we can do that because that's contractible. And then we just remove this. So we remove this and then we add it again without that, that, that edge. So it, it, needs, it, it needs three steps. But it's kind of a it's kind of a nice nice little uh, thing. That, that is, that's essentially kind of the the argument which is given in this uh, uh, C C Y Y paper. <clears throat> so that's the thing. The second is very very exciting by itself because I I was working on uh, graph coloring using this uh, operation. There are very nice operations in graphs here. So you have a graph, for example. You have a pla planar graph like that, which is in graph coloring. What you want to do is you want actually to color it with four colors. And uh, what you can do is uh, uh, what you can do is you can make edge refinement. So if I take an edge here, I can just take a, a new vertex in the edge and connect it to the intersection of the uh, uh, the unit spheres of the points. <laughs> so the unit is this. So I connect it to that. Okay, we have Lemma 2 says that edge refinements are homotopies. What is an edge refinement? So you have a graph that and we have an edge. What we do is we take a new vertex in the middle of the edge and we kind of connect it to all the intersection of the unit spheres. So this is A, this is B. So take new vertex. and then connect to So we kind of make morph uh, an edge to a to a vertex. <clears throat> so this is a very nice uh, a step. It's kind of a local barycentric refinement in some sense and you can repeat that, right? You can always take so you can take that. So you can you can make the a, a graph finer and finer. So it's a nice game uh, to play also to make every vertex inside a, a disk uh, 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 even with even degree. Then we have an Eulerian disk. <clears throat> so uh, Lemma 2 says that these edge refinements are homotopies. So that's something I'm not going... Uh, 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 it, it, there's a, a third lemma which actually kind of I want to mention because it really needs the barycentric refinement. It says and it needs that, 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 that structure. So we have actually the graph, it deals with the graph A is equal to Psi of G, which is this connection graph. So what happens is this connection graph uh, has edges which we actually want to get rid of. So one of these edges is uh, is this one. It's a connection between between uh, two original edges. Right? The original graph G was uh, what 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 I have here. So what this is is kind of this is this this edge here, and this is this edge here, and so they intersect. So because they intersect, that that's why they uh, there's a connection between them. And then there is, of course, also the zero dimensional part, which is here. <clears throat> so we, what we want to do is we want to get rid of, of these edges here. So E belongs to an edge. X intersected B such that X intersected Y such that
so that we have no incidence. We have a connection, we have an intersection, but no incidence. This means this is a, 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 an edge which needs to be removed to get this is psi of g. And then we have phi of g. So we have a... So very quickly about uh, theorem three. So we have, uh, you have simply see complexes, right? Then we have the graphs. And then we have topological spaces. And uh, what we have is we have these two maps here, phi and psi. But we also can do the geometric realization of a simplicial complex. This leaves combinatorics and gets out of finitism and gets into, you know, the usual axiom system. So if, the, if ZFC should, should, should fail, what I'm going to say is actually going to fail because we don't have any mathematics here. But uh, for finitists, so this is kind of a categorical betrayal to go into topological spaces, you know, even, even using the infinity axiom. So what we have is we have a, let's call this gamma. You have the you have the you have the geometric realizations. <coughs> so the geometric realizations are really kind of in R n. We can realize so G or any graph. <coughs> so any complex <coughs> can be realized <coughs> in R n such that the simplices the sets become uh, simplices. K3 becomes a really a triangle in Rn. Another triangle, etc. So this is the old-fashioned way uh, how kind of a simplicity complexes are usually introduced. And so the abstract finite simplicity complex structure is not using anything about Rn. But still we can do that. And then we have in Rn or in topological spaces, we have homotopy things. So we have topological spaces and then we say x is homotopic to y if there exists a map f which goes into a map g such that f uh, composed with g is homotopic to the identity map. But so what, what, what do we have? I mean just a picture here. So what we have is if we have uh, already realized g uh, and uh, now we want to realize g plus x. So this can be done. So this is uh, realized in Rn. <coughs> so, so if gamma of G is, 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 is realized in Rn. So what we can do is we can realize it in Rn plus one. So we take a point X here and then kind of we connect it together. So, and then this raising of the pyramid going up, right? So you, you raise the pyramid and you, you get to the, you make this uh, pyramid expansion here. So when you do that, you, 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 you can do that continuously, right? By, by deformation going from here to here. So we can then realize the uh, G plus X in uh, Rn plus one. So these homotopies, which graph homotopies are really, uh, uh, contractibility is, is also kind of then just uh, 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 identified with contractibility, which you know in uh, in uh, in uh, in R in in R N. <clears throat> so let's look at quickly at this uh, product. So that's quite an interesting uh, uh, interesting thing. So this is the Shannon. <clears throat> Claude Shannon. <clears throat> so uh, lived very close by here. Uh, and uh, a giant father of information uh, theory. But he was also kind of introducing that algebra of graphs. And uh, so we can, you can do calculus. This is actually how I, how I, I work now on this uh, calculus and, uh, and, and arithmetic of, of, of graphs. So, so what you can do is you first of all can add graphs. Right? This is the disjoint union. <coughs> And uh, then we can also uh, we can also multiply graphs. So what we what we can do is we, we so the disjoint union is just uh, so if you have v e plus this is 
the disjoint union of the edges and the disjoint union of the of the uh, uh, of the of the edges and the vertices. So this is a monoid, and you can extend it to uh, to make to, to, to build a group, and uh, so and then and then the multiplication will kind of then extend make this make this a ring. So what we have is uh, we can also look at the, the product. So if you take the, the product, so this is a plus b. And we can also, usually this, this kind of notation is used, um, I think it's a silly uh, uh, thing. Because this is such a natural uh, operation, let's just write it as, as a star b. Or simply just. Let's just write it as a times b. So a times b is a, a, a kind of what we have is a, we have the Cartesian product as vertex z, and then we we take the edges, we take the, we connect to a and b. A b and c d are connected. If either a is equal to c and b is connected to d. Or uh, uh, b is equal to d and uh, uh, a, a uh, c is or both or a b d is in f and a c is in b. So the picture is be better to explain it in a picture. Right, let's take this graph and this graph. So it's kind of L three times uh, k two. So let's make L3 times L, L3 times L2. So this is L2. This is L3. So L2, what is L2 times L3? <coughs> so what we have is we take the Cartesian product of the of this, uh, the various products which use the Cartesian product of uh, I think there's a tensor product, there's a weak product, there's a strong product, there's the, this is actually also called the strong product, and there's the large product. But essentially this is the only important uh, uh, multiplication. We will see why. I mean this is this is a, a, a so it makes it a ring and it's dual to a, another ring which actually is then called this uh, just the, the, the large product with a, with a join as an addition. So it is, it, is, it is the ring. You really kind of, you don't want to look at anything else than that. And what you do is you connect two uh, 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 vertices, new of these vertices, if the projection on either one is either an edge or vertex. So this is kind of connected, this is connected. This, all of the, uh, these connection things are there. This is actually called the Cartesian product. And then you also uh, add the tensor product, which is which is this. So this also because it projects onto this. If you would replace it with the and with or, you would get the strong product, which is a total mess in general. It's much much more, uh, uh, but it's dual, dual, dual to this. Product. This is the product we we need, and it's some somehow it's a, it's a model of. Uh, it's a model of kind of a, a, the, the Cartesian product, which we know in the continuum. And actually what happens is we can justify this uh, because what happens is if, so we have a G and H are simply C complexes. And G cross H is not the simplicial complex, right? Because it's not closed under 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 uh, uh, taking sub uh, finite subsets. It's a Cartesian uh, product. But what we can do is we can still define psi of G of H, which is defined in the in the same way. We just take the intersection property so that we have to have the intersection here and intersection here. So that that produces actually just exactly that thing. So that's actually psi of G. So this kind of justifies that if the Cartesian product here perfectly makes sense on that graph level uh, thing, also under the barycentric refinement, and uh, so you can also take that, which is actually also important. <coughs> a 
actually this is another product then this is a, a, a this is another this is the kind of the stanley raisner product i looked at that uh, uh, because this is nice for 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 cohomology so when you do that so you have Kunit, <coughs> the Kunit formula but it's not so uh, 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 direct you have to use a, a chain homotopy uh, argument to actually show that the Kunit formula holds that it it has the right properties which you know from the continuum uh, but once you know that the, the, the graphs are homotopic and, 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 and cohomology is invariant under that, uh, under homotopy steps, you can easily show that by extending the co-cycles and co-boundaries, or use the heat flow. So what you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you have also the QNET directly here. So that's kind of a, uh, that's kind of nice. And uh, so theorem four is, uh, tells us that if A is, uh, you know, if you deform A or B or both together, you actually kind of also you have a deformation of the product. It's also pretty, pretty obvious, but it's kind of messy to write that down. For example, we make a, 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 an extension here of that. Uh, so this is a homotopy step which in, it extends this here to a, to a triangle. Then so we have to do that every, uh, 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 everywhere here. And then uh, what happens is if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, <clears throat> if you look at the, if you look at the connection graph of the homotopy extension, so that's the same thing. Then uh, so that that so this this is homotopy. This this is a homotopy extension. So what we have is uh, uh, so it's it's let's say a one times b is homotopic to AB if A1 is homotopic to A. <clears throat> and the reason is because what you have here is actually, you can just remove this vertices one by one. What you have is a, 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 a contractible, a contractible, uh, a, a contractible subgraph here, and you can remove each of them. So that's this. So, so what this actually shows, this, this, this is interesting because it shows that this ring, so this is a, a Shannon ring, <coughs> so we have a ring of graphs or a ring of simplicity complexes if you want. This ring actually uh, can be also looked at uh, after taking homotopies. So if you look at the thing, so we get actually a ring of homotopy uh, <coughs> so the the, 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 the the graphs which are homotopic to one these are the this is the one element but, but he was motivated by communication problems like if you have a graph here and this is an alphabet and uh, uh, you can mix up a and b b and c and c and d so these are the miscommunication uh, 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 possibilities. You can mix that up. And so the, the question is what happens when you take a, when you when you now take a, a two two channels of the information and you, you look at the you look at all pairs and then you look at what what uh, uh, whether you can do better than uh, uh, than what you do before. But then you take the product of these these graphs. So we take the product of that. So that's the product, essentially, kind of the Cartesian product of the of the simplicity complexes. So he was he was he was uh, he was then interested in uh, the incidence number. So incidence number of a graph is the number of independent uh, vertices, <coughs> maximal number. So in this case, uh, what is kind of a an independent thing. This is an independent set here, right? Because you 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 are not connected. You have not not two of them are connected in the in in, in the graph, and it's maximal. So the e of e, e of uh, c four is equal to two. If you look at the e of c five, it's also equal to two. Right? One two. It's also related to coloring, of course. So one two. You cannot you cannot add any any of this uh, other thing. And then uh, you have a, a E of C6 is then kind of a three. 
But now what happens if you take E of uh, C4 times C4, which is uh, 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 4, so we take the square root of that. <coughs> so you, you don't gain anything here by, by going further. But what actually happens is if you make it the, uh, uh, the E of C5 times C5, then you get the, <coughs> then you get the square root of 5. And uh, so this is, uh, this is, this is already. Uh, so Shannon, Shannon was interested in you know, what happens when you take the product of these, many of these things. So if you take the limit, this is actually a limit because it's the supremum of i a to the n to the one over n. Actually, Shannon looked at the, uh, so this is today called theta of a. So Shannon looked at the logarithm of theta of a, which is kind of more natural if you look at entropy, uh, if, you, if you know entropy, how entropy is defined. So uh, especially dynamical systems, one over n, then we have the log of uh, i a to the n. <coughs> the exponential growth rate of that independence number, uh, it's like the Lyapunov exponent measures the exponential growth rate of the errors. So, and then, which is entropy also by, uh, 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 Bayesian theory, and uh, so this is a, this is a, this is very much a kind of a dynamical property. And it's, it's also there's some parallels here. This is hard to compute. Uh, the independence number is hard hard, hard to compute. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> but fortunately there are some. Uh, by the way, what happens here for C five? One actually knows that uh, theta of C five is the square root of five. Theta of C seven, we don't, we have no idea. So it's already for sim very simple graphs, it's a hard thing to do. So we introduce this theta of a, which is a, 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 which is a number which can be computed. And, uh, a, 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 and then we have this theta of a is smaller equal to theta of a is smaller or equal to i of a. <coughs> Uh, and uh, there is also another uh, property, which is the chromatic number. I don't write chi of a. So this is sometimes called the sandwich theorem. So these are hard to compute. Also hard. This might even be kind of impossible to compute in general but uh, uh, but but this can be computable this can be computable in, in polynomial time so that's nice and uh, actually we compute the, this uh, this uh, this number we can compute this number for uh, for uh, psi of psi of g <clears throat> and so what we show is we show that for theorem 5, We, we show that uh, uh, theta of, so we know, first of all, we know that psi of g of any simplicity complex is equal to the number of uh, zero dimensional sets, so the f0, the f0 of the first component of the, of the f vector. That, that's, the, that, that, that's kind of pretty clear, right, if you, If you have if you have vertices, if you have vertices originally in the Simplicia complex, right? They are uh, they cannot intersect, so this is an independent set. So actually, uh, uh, you, you can you can you can you can show th this is this is also maximal because if you would take another, if another point would be have been chosen in the independent set, you can split it up into the in, into the zero dimensional part, and still have a larger independent set. So this is really kind of, a, so this is, let's call this M. <clears throat> so this is, this is a, this is, this is okay. Uh, so this part we can compute. This part we can also compute here. So what we have is this uh, Lovatz number of Psi of G, this connection graph here. So Lovatz number, that's an interesting thing. So the Lovatz number is actually 
uh, a, a geometric it, it, it's a geometric uh, 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 number. Uh, so Lovatz has this picture of a, of a, uh, so you attach to every ui is a, is a, is a, is a, is a unit vector. Attached to every vertex. the graph. So the graph is, uh, in, in the case of C5, we have, we can take R3. <coughs> so in the case of C5, that's the, that's the picture of Lovatz. So this is C5, and then we take R3, and we take C is equal to the, the uh, we take a, 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 a we, if we call, we call this, he calls this the umbrella. So we can attach five vectors we can attach five vectors to this, uh, to the to, to each of these points. We attach a vector, so so that we have attached to the graph, we have attached uh, an orthogonal matrix, a kind of a, a orthogonal columns of a matrix. So it's a, it's a, it's not a square matrix, but then uh, so this is kind of a, and then what 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 we want is then if two vertices are not connected, they should be perpendicular. That's the assumption. So this uh, vector and this vector, they are not connected. So this should be 90 degrees. So if, so that means ui times u, or let me just write it like that as a uj is equal to zero if ij is not in the edge set. So that's the a, that's a assumption. And actually, in this case, you can actually write these vectors explicitly down. It's cosine theta sine phi sine theta sine phi by cosine phi, where theta is uh, e to the 2 pi, uh, theta is 2 pi k over 5, and phi is equal to cosine phi is equal to the fourth root of phi. So this is just a geometric picture of the umbrella you know, the, the, the umbrella of Lovas. Uh, uh, so Lovas um, umbrella here, and then what you actually have is that this number, theta of phi, this Lovas number, so what is theta of G, is uh, 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 a second square of the largest angle, which you have here, but you can write it as uh, max, the minimum over all C and U, then the maximum over all I, 1 over C U I squared. So this is the second square. Uh, Lovatz angle. So ge geometric a geometric angle of, of, of that uh, the maximal angle of a uh, of that of that umbrella of that umbrella here and uh, you can see that actually with this thing what you get is <clears throat> you you get just the square root of five you take the square root of that and you have the square root of five uh, as the as the uh, that that is the proof why uh, the pentagon has uh, the you can also bound it from below, right? You can bound it from below here that you have the square root of five, but then you have also an upper bound, upper bound, and so you you can you can compute this thing of the of the of the c five is the square root of five in the thing. So we have g, and uh, uh, so this is a simplicity complex. And then uh, psi g is the graph, <coughs> connection graph. Let's call m is uh, g0. This is f0 of g, which is the number of vertices, zero-dimensional simplices. So that m is equal to 4. So 
what we do is we, we build now vectors in R4. So we are doing it in R4. So uh, if, 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 if we have a set, uh, uh, so it's kind of clear what we are doing. So u of uh, x is equal to, we put, for example, this. So if this is, if, 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 if this is, uh, <clears throat> so we put a one when, uh, when, so this is this is the vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, vertex four. So that actually is when x is equal to two. <clears throat> so you see what we do, right? So you take u x is equal to uh, one one zero zero for x is equal to one two, or we take u x is equal to one zero 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 if x is equal to one. At right? every set we can encode like this uh, in, a, in, in, in R4. So that's what, what, what happens. And now this uh, Lovas condition, this is an orthogonal representation. So this is, we take it as over square root of two, square root of two, over one, we just normalize it. So we have orthogonal vectors. And then we take, uh, uh, what, we, what we check, what we have to check is that the, the dot product, this is the standard dot product, ux, ui is equal to zero if x intersect with y is not equal to the empty set. That's exactly the condition, right, which we have to have to be satisfied. So this connection graph connects any two which are uh, where we have a non-zero intersection. So that's kind of satisfied here. And then we take c is a, our vector, or the umbrella, umbrella, uh, so this is the umbrella uh, uh, a stick, right, that we take just as one, 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 uh, one over uh, 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 two. So in general, if you have n sets, we just take a, a, a square root of one square root of n. But then you can check that the, that the, 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 the maximum, <coughs> the maximum of all uh, one over C U X square is just N. M. Right, that's M. You take the square root of M here. So we have M. So this tells us that the, by definition of the Lovatz number, the Lovatz number of psi of G is smaller than, uh, is equal to M. So the theta by the that is by the, by the Lovatz inequality when you show that it's small. But then we have also uh, uh, i of m, i of psi of g is equal to m. So, so theta, theta of psi of g is equal to m. <coughs> so that's, that's, that's the argument. actually think that also phi of uh, phi of g <coughs> the theta of phi of g is m2 i'm almost sure about this because what happens is we have the lower bound is the same we have the same independent set of the zero dimensional parts and again uh, kind of what, why is it what why why is it uh, so if you take the product of the thing and in, in in one of the one of the components you have a you have a, a, a positive dimensional part. You can split it up and make the make the uh, make the independence number larger. So, but still, I, I would actually prefer to have a to have such a a, a Lovatz representation uh, thing, uh, concrete vectors attached to it. This doesn't work for the for the intersection graph because what happens is they can be intersecting but not be contained in each other. So. Uh, and then when they intersect, so the dot product can become uh, can become larger. But I think it might still work. I mean, you have to you have to you have to check that. <clears throat>